What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. We have a Jubilee video, and it is trans conservatives versus liberals. So I'm on my PC. This is a very long video. It's an hour and 25 minutes. So we're just going to take specific cuts, talk about it, and I'm going to give my own opinions. I haven't seen this video at all yet. Personally, I know Sasha. Claps for Sasha. Yay, good job. I know we did a good job. And I also know who Blair White is, and I disagree with her most of the time, but I'm going to go in here unbiased because she does say things sometimes that do make sense. I say that generously, okay? Don't drag me yet because we're just going to see what these people have to say. Being a non-binary person that sometimes has the choice to either go into a men's restroom looking like this. So you can look at me looking no, it's, like this. It's just interesting that I thought this was a trans debate. That's oh, what I thought. Non-binary people, non-binary people fall, fall the under the trans, trans umbrella. I yeah. Mm. So I don't know, maybe you could educate yourself. A little bit. I on think that. I think I and could educate then you. you figure out, I think I could educate you. You know what right. reality is. Oh. <laughs> I fucking love Sasha. <laughs> Shit. It is a safety concern for trans women to share a female restroom. I'm going to say no. We're just going to base it off of no because there's a bunch of million other things that they're going to connect into here. It's not necessarily saying that trans women. It all comes down to self ID. When we moved into a self-ID process, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of men, just simply self-IDing into being trans women to utilize the female restroom and to harm women. Or just no. <laughs> if there was that happening enough, there would be statistics. There would be a graph to actually show that. If men want to harm women, they're going to do so regardless. They're not going to go through an entire process of transitioning or putting on a wig and a dress to enter the women's restroom to attempt to harm somebody in the restroom. It, yes, maybe it has happened this many times in the whole wide world. We don't know. But if somebody wants to harm someone, at the end of the day, they're going to do it by not dressing up as a woman. I think that is a very, an extremely weak argument. They're, they're getting arousal from just being there. You know, there was a photo or it was a video that went viral, I think like just two weeks ago, with some like whole man with a boner in the women's restroom. And there's just some poor woman filming it. Like, am I just supposed to like accept that this is here? So I think there's levels to it. I think that Trans women who are actually trans, you know, we're talking gender dysphoria, transitions, making the effort, you know, probably once you reach a certain point in your transition where you can actually assimilate within that space and not cause a disruptance, that would probably be the ideal time to start doing that, right? Whereas, you know, Okay, agreed with Blair White. I think for safety reasons, you should go into the restroom where you look like just so you don't get beat up or just so people aren't attacking you. I don't even know what video they're referencing and I really, this is another reason why I don't like Jubilee because there's a lot of false information. There was a video that actually um, arose on the internet where a cis woman who looked trans or somebody thought she was trans was being harassed for being in a women's restroom because the other person thought she was trans. I hear about those people all the time wondering what other genitals people have in bathrooms because they're so concerned about trans people but they're just attacking cis people because they think that they're trans because we've created this narrative of what trans looks like or supposed to look like or something there's different reasons people are trans and some people really are trans because they're horny and some people are trans because they really felt that way from you know a young age or whatever Are there people trans because they're horny? I'm not educated enough about the trans fetishization, but I know there are people out there who fetishize trans people. I don't know if they go to the extent to transition into being trans. Maybe there are, but um, I just I thought that was a very interesting point. In government-run and government-funded buildings, there should always be a third space for us to use. But I think that private property owners can make the rules for their establishment and figure out how to enforce those rules. We're in a state right now where you have to allow anybody to use whatever restroom they want. If you're a decent human being, you do what causes the least disturbance. So for example, I filmed a YouTube- Okay, very simple. I always like to use the family restroom just because every other restroom is fucking disgusting. Not that I go into the women's restroom, but it's public restrooms are disgusting. I try to avoid them at all costs. If you're living in a state where you don't like the laws there, and they really bother you, you know, bathroom laws specifically, you could just, you can go to Arkansas. You can go to Arkansas and live as a trans person and kind of see how that works out. Just try it. It's a lot cheaper. If you're in California, like, I don't know why you're living in California. <laughs> if like, you just, I don't fucking, why would you want to live here? The disagreeers, please step forward. I want to comment on Blair's point. The one thing I kept hearing 
through all of the nuance is passability. Because ultimately, ultimately, when we talk about passability, it determines how you get harassed in the bathroom. Because honestly, if you don't look so passable or whatnot, people are going to say, oh, that's a man with a dress on, and then there's going to be discourse. But the reality of it is, honestly, who cares who's trans and who's cis going in the bathroom? You should be minding your own business, being able to pee and do your business in peace. Conversation around this man with a boner on or whatever, like... That's also a good point because sometimes no matter how, how far you are into your transition, you might not pass. I, th I feel like the, the bathroom thing has just been such a gigantic issue when there's a lot of other things to focus on. Like, all right, you see someone who who is trying to look like a woman or a man and they're just going into the stall and they're doing whatever and they're getting out. It does not take that long. It's really not that big of an issue. I feel like people are worrying way too much about it. And like I said, there's not enough statistics or enough cases of pedophiles dressing up as women or men to attack people in the bathroom. They're just going to do it anyways without dressing up. I saw that picture and I thought to myself, that's really a right wing talking point and conservative propaganda because that's their ideology. How is it when it was comes a thing to trans, happened. I'm speaking. That's their ideology when it comes to trans is because trans, I'm sorry, conservatives have a basic level understanding of what transness is in the first place. And with all due respect, I do not think any of you are basic, but they use you as the baseline to amplifying this propaganda. How is it propaganda if it's a thing that really happened and was caught on video? Like, it Okay, we're gonna look up the boner thing. We have to do it. So I've tried to find more context on this video, but it is literally a five second video of whether or not it is a trans woman or actually a man dressed as a woman with a boner in the female toilets where I cannot find any other information on it. It is a super short video. I don't know if it was something for right-wingers to use for a talking point, like someone could have staged that. Because there's no other information, that person didn't get arrested, they haven't been identified or anything like that, which is very interesting because that is sexual harassment. That's all we have on that video. That's a very weak, weak argument that you're bringing to the table to share about bathrooms. Let's say it is real then, okay? We'll give it the benefit of the doubt. That would be weird, yes, and that should not be allowed at all. Regarding my previous point, if this was something that was happening so often, it would be a statistic, but it is not. It is not a statistic. I cannot find a singular graph where it shows men dressing as women to harass women in the women's restroom. I, that, I, I feel like that is a reach and there's not enough information on the video. It was an actual occurrence. It okay. wasn't staged. It, it happened. And that's not the only, it's not an isolated incident. incident. That's not enough for me to say because actors can do that. Who knows, they could have been an actor trying to make a point against trans people. Po passability, politics is really a thing in our trans community, especially when we come to the debate of restrooms. Well, you yeah. can say it's politics, but actually it's just real life, right? It's just about Correct. where I you're agree. able to assimilate to and where you're not. And I think one of the biggest problems in the trans community is the community by and large has seemed to reject assimilation and seems hell-bent on... That's not true. I think it's absolutely true. You see people talking about how you don't need to work on your transition at all to enter women's restrooms, and I think that that is so selfish. That drives so me crazy. It's so disregarding of women who may or may not feel uncomfortable. But the trans woman experience is not monolithic, so who are we I to police transness? Why are we policing other people's trans and how they show up? We have to, to protect but women. We, why are y'all policing, though? That's what I don't understand. But you're using I, words that we're policing. not using. It's not policing. We're listening to policing. women. And if you have 50%, we won't say 50%, but if you have a large chunk of the population of women saying that they are uncomfortable yes. with a certain thing, a good person leans in and listens. So why they are don't you just not listening to it. other trans women, Blair? I, I think do that's, all day okay, and right so, now. But you said one side and that's great, but what about the side of trans women? If we're not bringing both sides into this conversation, Here's what I would say then, then it is unbalanced. Here's what I would say then, because I do understand both sides. I'm almost a decade into my transition, which means I was one time a year in, six months in, two months in. So I understand that, but I also knew at the very beginning of my transition that if I'm not at a place physically where I'm not making people feel uncomfortable or I'm making people uncomfortable then right. that's on me that's Correct. my responsibility to make sure that I'm going places a certain way to make sure that they're comfortable because it's for your it was safety my also too right would well, you also you can, say that you're safe well, your safety I know that plays a part you seem to be looking at through the lens of always trans being the priority and I'm looking at it through the lens of women being the priority okay I get both sides here like they actually do both make sense some people don't want to assimilate into society some people want to abolish gender as a whole and whatever 
whatever. That could be your own personal opinion and stuff like that. But that's kind of how it's been, men, women. I tried my hardest as well to assimilate into society because I want to be viewed as a man. I want to use the man's restroom. I want to do whatever man, 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 all that stuff. So I, tr I worked my hardest and it becomes really difficult when let's just say I never did any of that stuff but I'm still identifying as a trans man and it's hard for me to pass. That's when shit becomes difficult, right? Because what if I did still look feminine or people still misgender me on a regular basis? That would be, you know, it's just, it's just ingrained into us from a young age. It's a difficult conversation and I get both sides because at the same time, things don't have to be so black and white, but also we are in those times where they sort of are we are moving forward but it doesn't move forward that fast so me assimilating into society the way that i am in the way that i wanted to is just what i ended up doing with my transition and hopefully others can it's hard for some people to pass um there's plenty why, of situations why, why i just want to know because why it's them who would that. fall victim to not actual trans women as i said but people posing as trans women I people who are, trans actually women are also victims of that as well i think the middle ground though is and i feel like i'm not coming at this from an extreme place i feel like an extreme place would be like no trans women in the bathroom ever that's the extreme position i'm saying work on your transition take it as your responsibility and be respectful. And that's the middle ground, right? This, this, is, a, this, is, a, this is a self preservation issue, right? So if somebody's in the bathroom and they have a boner, that looks bad on all of us. And when people, and when, when our community's not calling that out and not saying that this is but wrong. How many, how many, I'm just, no, to I, your I, point, I, how many cases has that? Occur. It, it happens. That, it happens a lot. We I, see it, it's, it's happening I'll, all the time. No, I there have to see There are, all the time. There are Twitter data. accounts. There. Yeah, I think I see a lot of different points from everybody here. Honestly, like I can understand like how some women may feel unsafe with men in there in the restroom. Men, when I say men, I mean men. I'm not talking about trans women. So being a non-binary person that sometimes has the choice to either go into a men's restroom looking like this, looking like this. You can look at me looking no, like this. It's just interesting. I thought this was a trans debate. That's oh, what I thought. Oh, don't even. That's what I thought. Non-binary people, non people fall the trans, trans umbrella. I that. No, they don't. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know. Maybe you could educate yourself a little bit I on think, that. I think I could educate you. And maybe then you would figure out, I think I could educate you, you know, what right? the reality is I'm and sure what trans actually means. I'm sure there's a non- <laughs> God. Well, because it's not a debate about who is really trans and who is not. It can be. We're talking about restrooms <laughs> as a trans non-binary person. When I go into a place that only has men's, men's and women's restrooms and I'm dressed like this, mm -hmm. my choice to go into the men's restroom at that point puts me in danger. Six years ago, when I, I was transitioned almost eight years ago, but six years ago, it was never an issue for me to use the women's room. Girls would literally drag me in there with them and say, girl, you need to be in our bathroom. And I was like, uh, I felt uncomfortable back then. I don't pass. I know I don't pass. So that's a me problem. And I'm not going to turn my fear of being attacked in the men's room into a woman's problem. It's but do you see how that was not an issue six years ago? Do you see how it is a controversial topic to talk about now is because of all of the fear mongering and all that stuff that people do with trans people and how political they have made it. They have made us look so disgusting, especially trans women. It's never talked about in trans men's bathrooms. I feel like we're so fucking long on this topic, but see how it was not an issue back then, but now it is because of all of the little things that they like to use. They like to use their little pawns to, to, to push their terrible false ideologies into the world to fear monger people and that controls people that controls sets of people so essentially there's just controlling you by fear by saying like hey there's a uh, uh trans women are men and they're just going in there to r word your daughters and that makes people scared and then they're like all right well fuck trans people this discussion about trans women being in the restroom also f affects biological women because here's, guess what? You know, biological women come in all shapes and sizes. There are, you know, a lot of lesbian women that deal with this issue that I've related with and, 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 and empathize because we both get pulled out of the restroom and thrown and, and, and guys try to beat us up because we're in a restroom with women. And then on top of it, to add that layer that it's not even being discussed in any mainstream, that this is just completely wiped out and that you're standing up for women, but you're not standing up for 
are women children. You're not standing up for biological females that are children. You're only standing up for what really affects you. And it's kind of sad that the idea that passability is, is you need to work on your transition. A lot of folks, especially in our community, have no access to finances, resources, jobs, to even get their foot in the door to get access to hormones. So you're putting all of these barriers just for them to be able to go to the restroom, which is a natural thing that we all have to do. So what do I need to do, piss outside? Because that's how I was treated my entire childhood. I would. I just feel like when this whole topic comes up, like it obviously. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I could see the the. I could definitely see like lesbians getting kicked out of women's restrooms too. When shit. It goes back to like there's dudes like jerking off in the bathroom and like, to me like when I hear that I'm like okay like but that's not trans women. So it, when we talk about this conversation and it seems like the fear is like literally cisgender straight men who are being creeps, and what sucks is cis straight men can be like creepy and then it's like trans women trans men are like paying the price for that and i feel like you know what that's what's really hard about it is because then i think people get the idea or some people have the belief trans women are just like they're just men in dresses you know what i mean but at the end of the day like for so many trans women and so many trans men the safest place for them is the bathroom that aligns with their gender and if you go to a place where it's illegal to do that or you have to go and like what's your id or like your birth certificate it puts you in an objectively unsafe situation and for me like i'm like if i walk in the women's room i mean i know i like look like a lot like i look 12 but like i feel like someone be like get out of here you know what i mean but like that's the vibe like i think you got to remember like when we're talking about it and we're talking about like these creepy dudes like in the bathroom Here's the, Here's the middle ground. Here's the middle ground. Y'all ready? We're gonna be so happy with this. This is the middle ground. We all actually agree. It's men that are the problem. Yep. It's not trans women, real trans women. However, the problem is our community has really eroded any barriers to actually being trans in the sense of your average cross-dresser can identify as a trans woman. But then it's not a trans woman. Well, you, I'm well, glad you feel that way. I feel that way as well. I agree with you wholeheartedly. However, with the state of the political correctness within the trans community, you can't really say that. Like that wait, person I I, is, wait, is this I, person I, saying they're self ID. No, no, I no they agree. say that they're trans, I, but I they're actually do, I actually do agree with you, Blair, 100%. I take because my back. Wow. That's one of those <laughs> things. Yeah, I told you. I'm Let's really go. like that. Yeah. I'm just going to say it for the millionth time. Uh, it's just how often is that happening? And on the very, very rare occasions that it does happen, yes, it that definitely does make trans people look bad, but those aren't trans people at the end of the day those are cis men using that and that's where like self id does become an issue like there's like what they're talking about i support the transgender military ban i think that oftentimes when you talk about trans people in the military people forget that most places if we're talking about feet on the ground and really going into war zones are really dangerous for trans people and so it's a really an extra risk you're talking about the culture that exists over yeah, there. Yeah, the Middle East, yeah. you know, yeah. it's so like that's not exactly the trans friendly. It's actually us, the yes. opposite. The medications that we take sometimes put us in conflict with being able to actually be combat ready. Uh, but there is some nuance here, obviously, like if there was a trans cook or a trans medic, I'm not exactly going to be upset. But um, for the most part, I, when it comes I, to combat. I hate supporting, like what you just said, I hate supporting it because it goes to the narrative of the. Um, should athletes compete in sports, you know, but... Trans athletes? Yeah, the, the drugs we take do weaken us, you know, so we're not like... You but the thing is, okay, but you're taking estrogen and your estrogen levels, levels are going to be that of a, a biological woman and vice versa for trans men. I'm back ready, but we're also not as physically strong as the guy counterparts well, standing right next to us. And so. I will say, like, as a person with HIV, I was diagnosed at 18, um, I couldn't go into the military, like, because I couldn't get Big Tarby overseas, you know? Yeah, so I, I will say, as probably the only tr person that served in the military on yeah. this entire yeah. panel. You should have spoke first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, the thing about it is, I think that there, there is a lot of nuance in this. I actually have friends that are currently serving in the military. I think there was a lot of um, miscommunic or misrepresentation of what the trans ban actually did. You know, you have soldiers, if you have surgeries, they go on profile, which means they can't actually do their job. They, they can't do PT. Um, if you have bottom surgery, it, it takes a year. And so as a leader, that person's filling a position of a job of somebody that should be doing it. Um, I don't mind somebody who is actually on 
hormones going there because there's a lot of people. I mean, people take PTSD medications overseas. They actually take six months of medication with them. Um, so a full out ban, I don't necessarily support um, because I think that any and everybody in the military, as long as you can do your job, you can go in there and nobody really cares. But it is those times when if you can't perform your job, that, that becomes an issue. Okay, but we could also say the same thing about other surgeries that people have that aren't SRS. What happens then when they have to be out for six months, et cetera? <laughs> I think it's very discriminatory to keep trans people out of the military. We pay our bills here. We pay our taxes here. We are Americans. We deserve to serve this country as well. However, you all did raise some great points about the concern and safety of trans people. And I do agree that something does need to be done about that to protect us. Who's protecting us in the military? Who is? I mean, if you're even diagnosed with like mild social anxiety, you're not eligible to enter the military. If you have like a crooked left, you know, pinky toe, you're not eligible. So discriminatory, I mean, that word sounds pretty in today's climate, very much like, oh no, discrimination, but it's not always bad. Sometimes it's for the safety and it's like, you know, when it comes to the military. Be, I can't go into the military at all. They're fucking, <laughs> there's, I probably have like 10 different things that I can and being trans can be one of them too. Sure, fuck it. It is important to protect all trans people in the military. Well, we can't waste resources protecting them. And so what if the best way to protect them, them is not putting them in a release with Muslims that are gonna kill them? Well, I just wanna interject your point about suicide. So as somebody who has worked uh, in community service with uh, community members directly, mm -hmm. a lot of their suicide issues actually revolve around access to finances. And the military is one of the highest employers of transgender people. So we actually see the suicide rate drop. And well, for that's me personally- a good point, but it's one of the highest employers of anybody. But if you're suicidal and you go into a job that has a high likelihood of PTSD, causing PTSD and all these other issues, then it becomes a big issue because then you already have a one mental illness and then you're compounding it with more. And when you're on, you know, a very strict yeah, regimen of, point, you know, if you're okay. trans and if you're really trans and we can get into who's really trans later because I'm yeah, happy to say about that, you're that but about if that. you're going to be on hormones, right, you're not always going to have access to those drugs when you're deployed and when you're in those situations. That's how, do you, how do you know that? Because medical because they care don't have is those covered kind of in, the trans, in the Middle East. Medical care is covered in the military, so they should have access to that. So that is false information. Mm -hmm. And so also, you guys are forgetting right, the fact. Well, hold on. You guys have all forgotten the fact of what is the flip side for these transgender individuals that are signing up for the military and they're taken out. <laughs> and that was their life plan. Where are they supposed to work and where is their employment supposed to be? No, because the mental that. illness no. that happens I agree, it's through horrible. homelessness and the lack of resources that come. So right. that is also they the actually, flip side of that. So if folks but, but don't have, hold on out. one second, but if they don't have access to a job that could offer it's them support dream. and research but, and access to medication, access to benefits, lifetime benefits. Uh, and at, at the end of the, the military has amazing, amazing benefits for you if you're at it. And if you're trans and your shit is covered, then that's absolutely amazing too. I think that's what the point you're trying to get across. That's something that most transgender people in any sector of any job- So do you job want an answer to your question or are you just gonna wrap? Because I can answer, you said, what about those people that were kicked out? If you're kicked out and you want, it once was the norm for you to participate in the military, that's sad. But at the same time, if that is what is determined for the ultimate safety and effectiveness of the military, nothing should come before that. Blair, have you ever the worked directly bombs, with trans Because the second people? bomb, have you ever worked directly? I am right now. I am right now. No, We're directly surrounded in by them. services in terms of nonprofits Sir, and actually she's a getting clients She's not That's grassroots. my entire career. She is not a grassroots not person grassroots. because truth be told, a lot of our community what does that even mean? is in grassroots. Have you ever had a client list of transgender that are people that you actually took care of? Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Took care of them like what, like paid their bills? No, I'm I don't sorry, Offering them services, getting them through services. I've helped a lot of trans people in my life, Trans-led organizations that are ran by trans people. I really want to see what you've done for those organizations because I don't see any of y'all on the front line. I've dedicated my entire life to in my own way, and you can disagree with that because we all have our vehicles and our methods Correct. towards Absolutely. promoting trans acceptance and the ultimate progression of the quality of life of trans people. I've dedicated my entire life to that, right? I access millions of people every single month on all my social media. Blair, <laughs> but your videos, as a former Blair White fan years and years and years ago, I'm talking like six years ago, you make fun of trans people on your channel. I don't, that's not really, that's not 
giving information. You're just kind of like, you don't really pass, so you're, fuck you, he, him, ha, ha, ha. Like, that's kind of all you do on your channel, essentially. Aside from some of the things that you do well very, very rarely, which is pointing out there was in this time where she was actually making content about, like, pedophiles and stuff like that, where she actually had some some decent points. But I, I've, I've watched plenty, plenty, plenty of Blair White to know that she lies through her videos, through her teeth. An insane amount. She lied on a political compass test to make herself look more conservative than she actually is is by the way if any of you do watch her um there's a whole thing about that literally go look at go look at it on reddit go look at it on reddit i don't want to talk about it but she did that too uh the whole janae marie croc thing i made it that's when i made a video about her she completely lied about the entire thing didn't even really apologize for it she continuously lies about other trans people and shits on them if they don't look the way that she wants them to look because apparently she thinks she is the trans god is who can determine who is trans and who isn't trans and what trans should look like. I guess that's what she thought her job was. That's all she does for content, essentially, is make fun of people from what I've picked up. I used to be a big fan of her. I know a lot of her content. This is where y'all's privilege come in because if y'all don't need my services privilege? My content trans, is a resource. If you do not need First services of all, from non-profits that are trans-led, you have privilege. I was raised by drug addicts. Have, I have I'm HIV. Sorry, I'm sorry. I create I, the I would, resources. I would rather I create work the with resources. My content is oh, a resource. Okay, cool. So we're gonna work with detransition who actually okay. need our help. Um. <laughs> oh, we're not talking about military. Oh my so. god. <laughs> it wasn't actually a full ban though. That's what people don't realize, okay? So You can still enlist. You, nobody got kicked out of the military. They didn't yeah. kick a single person out of the military who who came forward and had gender dysphoria. Two, it was actually easy. It's, it's more open to serve it? under the, the ban than it was under don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Okay. So you could actually be a trans person and present however you wanted off duty. You could go to a ball in a dress and nobody cared and you couldn't, they couldn't kick you out. And serving in the military, it's not a right. They can disqualify you for any reason, physical, anything. People get kicked out of the, all the time because they can't pass PT tests. Right. And, and Overseas, yeah, you don't necessarily have access to refrigerators for your testosterone or any of that other stuff. So if you're taking injections, it's a lot different. I'm supposed to refrigerate it? <laughs> no. I don't know, man. I, I don't know too much about the transgender military, man, but I don't think that they should. Then why, is it a to why is this even a topic of a discussion if transgender people aren't completely... Whatever. Who's joining the military not to f serve in the country, but only to get the cheaper drugs and the, the paid for surgery. And I don't want that trans person Okay, he's joining our the military because they got a woman pregnant and they just need to pay their bills. There's so many different reasons why people either, join the military. I want dedicated there people. There are easier I want dedicated people that want to defend the country that I live in. There are and easier ways to get drugs. Okay, but there are millions and millions of there, maybe not millions, there are so many people who join the military just for the benefits. <laughs> like, if not, that's probably the reason they join are for the benefits. Do you know how many benefits you get from being in the military? People join, that's why they put the benefits in the military, and so people join it. <laughs> like, there are, there are plenty of people who are there who don't give a shit about being there. I just really hope that the people at the top that you're referring to aren't transphobic, because let's be clear of the isms that are oh in the God. military. Man, we live in America, people are Excuse allowed me, to I'm be. Speaking. Do not interrupt a black trans woman when she's speaking. You've interrupted Let's be very me hella clear. When it comes to, in, when it comes to ism, oh, as somebody who's serving for you so to tell you a person to put- I can picture Sasha in this situation right now. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Look at his face, dude. <laughs> First of all, it has that is so disrespectful to tell a person I'm gonna of have color, an a black person, how they should feel. How dare you sit up there okay, and well, say no, that? No, it's disrespectful for you to tell a white person. Hold on, just you a second. You screamed at and you just didn't scream at a point. You no, you no, you're being disrespectful. Come, come back. Rewind now. the tape. You, oh. Can you please stop? 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 We're good. You need to calm down. No, you do, honey. My God, someone get a Xanax for her. Oh, keep it, keep it cute, girl. Keep it real cute. <laughs> that's my fucking line blair don't take my f actually i think she says that too so i need a goddamn xanax right now dude fuck <laughs> oh body guards outside but the but rest of shit isn't okay. the rules are you cannot speak when somebody else is speaking schools should include trans conversation in sex ed they should include any lgbt in sex ed <laughs> really you guys waited on that? That's pretty vile. I feel like, um... <laughs> Fuck. Like, as someone who had top surgery and went on hormones, like, it's a very emotionally intense experience. I think in terms of, like, minors getting surgery, like, the reason why I'm not, like, no to that is because I feel like maybe someone's, like, 
17 or something. I honestly feel like it is a really intense surgery. I know for me, like top surgery when I was like 16 would have been like so good and it would have literally like saved my spinal cord from like binding all the time. That's why I'm like, yeah, like I feel like in instances like it can make sense. I feel like Sasha is spot on with that for sure. It can definitely save. I, uh, there is definitely like an age where it's like, okay, is it safe? Is it not safe? When you're a minor, there are a lot of things that come into having surgeries and it's not just top surgery. There is a lot of consent that needs to happen through the parents, through the children, through therapists and through doctors. You know, I did have mine at 19, which is still fairly young and I am 27 and I am still super happy that I had it. And if I could have had it earlier, it would have been better, especially for people with um, bigger chests. Like, Sasha says um, that can save, you know, binding can also affect your chest and your surgery results. If you can save some years from not having to bind, that's, that's helpful too. So I'm not a trans man, <laughs> so I don't have the experience or whatnot, but I do think that it has to be done safely. There is a process when it comes to having these types of gender affirming surgeries. You know what I'm saying? Talking with your parents and then going to uh, endocrinologists and going through therapy to make sure this is right for you. People have a choice to their autonomy. Now I know that everybody does not, yeah. but those that do or whatnot should choose with the right medical education yeah they should choose with um safety and with full understanding of what is um a benefit and what may not be a benefit i agree with a caveat that there does need to be some sort of process which there is by the way yeah. in place yes Absolutely. Um, sometimes there's a slip through. Yes, things happen because again as i said earlier this is a big world but to again negate people the ability to walk through a door that you have walked through i'm going to say this again and then close it behind you is a little bit of a slap in the face for anybody who's seeking transition. Yeah. Mm. And as somebody who has experienced uh, top surgery and also waited quite a bit of time, a lot of severe damage actually was created to my rib cage that my wife, who is half my size, actually has the same size uh, rib cage in the back as mine. Um, and these are permanent damage to my body because I, bi I binded for about eight years and there's even still issues that I have with breathing wow. and certain issues that I face that, um, you know, unfortunately, if I had that surgery a lot earlier, earlier, I would have a better posture. I'd have a lot of pain that is not within my body that I have to deal with on a daily basis while uh, simultaneously the idea that, you know, I get maybe under 16 top surgery would be something that would possibly even make me a little uncomfortable, but I also know that I was homeless at 16, paying my own rent and uh, left my home at 16 and had to live my life as an adult very early. Damn. So I was able to make those decisions for myself, but I think it's weird that others can't seem to see that I could make a medical decision for myself when I had to physically take care of myself. My transition, my top surgery has done nothing but take physical pain off my body, especially with as large chested as I was and having to bind for as many years as I did. So this is what the conservatives are going to say. This is exactly what they're going to say. You shouldn't be able to make that decision until 18 plus or maybe even older because what if you look back and you regret it because the, the, the detransitioners that we're seeing, blah, 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 were forced into blah, blah, blah. That's, that's my guess. I'm just guessing. I don't think any minor should be having life-altering elective surgery or life-altering elective medicalization uh, period. Um, and so I, I, when I work on bills across the country that, that do ban this for minors, there's a couple things I point out. Um, I point out that I don't think a 16-year-old female who wants breast implants should be able to get that either. When we look at what we allow minors to do, like Okay, that, but that's also a different thing. Needing breast implants at 16 is something that somebody would want and it's not um, debilitating to them. Now, if there was a 16 year old who had, who was just biological female, not trans or anything like that, and had gigantic boobs who were giving her back issues and stuff like that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. She literally is, has a horrible quality of life. She would be eligible to have a surgery under all the consent. This is not a trans person because it's debilitating to her health, her mental, her mental health, her body, and all that stuff. Someone would be eligible at 16 for that if they had really, really big boobs. They're not life-saving. They're not, if you don't get it, you're not going to die. It's not like getting, like, having appendicitis and having to get your appendix removed or anything like that. It's elective. I think that's the key point here. 
My thing about surgery, I'm actually vehemently against surgery, like all of it, top surgery, bottom surgery, all of it. Um, particularly because you need your genitals. Like, it's just that simple. Hello. You know, you, you have these people now who have non-functioning fake penises and vaginas that, you know, they, they, you've had issues like, for instance, Richie had where like your urethra folds in half and then you can't pee no more. This is about oh, I, are you um, top, top surgery, top surgery yeah. too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, just or just surgery. Okay, but I think at the end of the day, that is up to the person. There are risks to every single surgery that you get. So if you do want to take that risk, you should have the freedom to be able to take that risk. You shouldn't ban people from having that choice. If they want to go into that knowing the risks, let them do it. And if the risks happen, then that's what they signed up for. But, you know, and I had, did have to go through, like, very, for top surgery and testosterone, like, I had to go through, like, a really big process. And I think that's Same. my thing is, like, instead Same. of an age thing, I think there's, like, a pro, like, there should be a process. You should have to, like, live as that gender and be seeking care and be having, like, a therapist for long term and a psychiatrist for long term and an endocrinologist for long term. And, like, it's really, like, specific to the person and I think would be, like, really rare anyway. But... That's just my stance. I agree with Sasha. I mean, essentially the same thing. I had to go through a process. I believe there should be a process. You should live for X amount or whatever. I know, I know that you've waited this long to get your surgery. I know, and I know the feeling, and I know how long you have to wait to get your hormones. I was a child. I was like eight years old. I say it all the time when I knew I was trans. I was probably three when I knew, and I was so sick of waiting, but I still went through with the process that I had to, and that was talking to a therapist and a doctor and taking the hormones and living as a man and making sure this is what I want. I knew it was what I wanted since I even went through puberty, okay? But I still did that just in case, just in case. That I agree with to an extent. Mm -hmm. This is definitely the prompt that I am the most passionate about because I think there are few things more vile, more irresponsible, more, you know, dangerous than saying a child can consent to permanently removing a body part that serves an extremely important function. Detransitioners all over the country can never breastfeed their children if they can even have them because if they did other things, that can stop them from having kids at all, right? The I told you, I told you, I told you that was going to be a point. Of course, it was Blair who brought it up. The idea that a child can consent to a sex change, to a gender-affirming surgery. Children can't, um, like... Surgery. If you believe that, Sorry, there there's that. really nothing that you can believe they can't consent to, right? Because that's pretty extreme. That's a permanent body modification under the best circumstances. I mean, you have to be so demented to believe that a child fully understands. I heard a few conversations about, well, if the child fully understands, I'm that's like how being a child works. Seventeen year like if a 17 year old is like living as male. For I get it. I understand that we change with age, especially in our teen years. I get it. We don't understand everything, but when it comes to transgender and, and a majority of the time we are correct, but we can't be right 100% of the time. And that's why I think these people fail. So it's like, oh, this person was wrong about their their transition and they got surgery when they were 16 let's ban everybody else from it too just because of that one person that's that's fucked up that's unfair because of one person's mistake where they thought that was the right choice for them with the doctors with what they were saying with their parents with every single thing that they went through and now four years down the line oh oh i was wrong about that let's just ban it for everybody else that doesn't make any sense because the other 99% are totally okay and totally cool today. I don't even want to talk about it again because I've brought it up in so many videos, but a majority of people who detransition do so because of societal pressure or because they can't pass or they can't afford it or something like that, not because they actually don't experience gender dysphoria. Five the prompt was about like, minors and 12 year olds are getting minor. top surgery. So it's easy to say, well, if it's 17 year olds, okay, well. In my state, that's actually There's a nuanced age. conversation about even 17 year olds, I guess, because the age of consent in some places is lower, but that's not what's happening, right? It's 12 year olds. When we talk about minors, it's like, what? That, that that's the thing that with Jubilee as well, uh, kind of sucks because there's spread of misinformation where are the 12 year olds getting top surgery people even among adults that, we all do different things in our transition correct. some of us want bottom some of us don't some of us want top some of us don't I understand, so you need a lot of time as an adult to figure out what you want to do 
But see, the thing is, though, some adults don't even understand what they want to do. Exactly. So, that's the kind so of how thing. can a child? But, but, see, but the, the, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. The thing is, though, but our minds are changing all the time. And that's why I'm saying people can't be right 100% of the time. We can't. It is impossible. When it comes to what you want and how you feel in your body, you're pretty in tune with that. But if you aren't and you were wrong, then you got to live with it. So what? That's that person's business. That's that. That's their life. That's what they did. Why should we stop other people from doing it when they know that's what they want? It's what I wanted. It's what many, many other trans people wanted and we're living our life happily. So once you start taking that away from people, you're gonna have so many more issues. The reason why I'm against it is because, like you said, the children need to go through the proper steps, the parents, the doctors, but in the state of California, if you, as a parent, tell your minor, no, you're not getting this, I'm not affirming your gender, mm. I'm taking your kids away and the California is gonna raise your kids for you. So Canada how's too. that? Canada too. That's not right. That is not true. The, 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 when you look between the lines, that is not true. I am going to stand with what I believe in is, I no, I don't think you should just be able to go in and be like, hey, I want testosterone. Hey, I want top surgery. And then be able to get it. People talk about this happening and it has happened. Like I said, I still think there should be a process and I know that it sucks. And I know some of you might not like to hear that, but I knew from a young age and it's a fucking shitty waiting game, but it still is helps people in the end and it, it does you could they, they all they have to do is fucking i don't even know you know what let me run for president i'll figure it out we'll figure out all the stupid trend shit just a couple year timeline okay oh god dude this conversation the obsession with the conservatives about other people's kids if it is your child it is your choice what you do with your kid yeah okay simple point that was i wish i heard more about that point that was a simple point they are so obsessed with other people's children, it's not your fucking child, so shut the fuck up. Why all of a sudden you want to save all the children from what? From what? Their parents helping them out? Their parents saying, okay, let's get you to the therapist and the doctor and let's talk about this because it's a bit confusing. Why? How is that, ch how is that child abuse? Non-binary should not be considered under the trans umbrella. Non-binary should not be considered under the trans umbrella. I think it's fine. Wait. Non-binary should not be considered. Oh, so they said yes, it shouldn't be under the trans umbrella. Okay, okay, okay. That's I think that the concept of a transgender umbrella is inherently an issue, right? Because when you're talking about something as nuanced, complex, um, full of social dynamics, medical dynamics, so many things to be considered. When you're talking about a transsexual, you should really be specific, right? And this entire concept actually of transgender is relatively new like it came about in the 70s or 80s through queer theory when originally it was about transsexuals which was considered a medical diagnosis which was a medical process and it's defined something very specific so for me when i hear that non-binary which if i'm to understand correctly means I think that androgynous you, right and it means you you know identify somewhere in between male and female um that's not what a transsexual is the definite Transsexual is uh, someone who has undergone a gender re reassignment surgery. Um, and then transgender is, you know, so someone who could have just begun their process of being trans. Also wanted to point out the white in the transgender flag literally represents neutral gender or no gender. So that's what the use of the white line is. And, you know, not every non-binary person also claims the term trans. They just want to be who they are. And some people do feel comfortable with the trans label. It's just really hard for me to wrap my head around why that bothers some people, that's all. The definition of a trans person is somebody whose body has been altered or somebody who identifies as a different gender whose body has been altered by right. hormones or surgery. And there's two genders, so if you want to say, you know, you identify as a different gender, it has to be one of those two, that's which would make you a transsexual yeah. if you're actually trans. I think it makes about as much sense as saying that bisexual is under the straight umbrella. It's like, no, that's a separate thing. And I think there's beauty in being separate things. There's beauty in having your own lanes. And my concern is there's so much clearly, as we see today, um, really heated conversations about trans people that when you start adding in queer theory, non-binary, it just makes it muddy and the people at home, hello, don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I get Blair's argument here. It can get confusing even for other transgender people. Trans in itself is confusing for other people to understand and having multiple different ways to identify definitely makes it more difficult. But that doesn't mean it has to be a bad thing. It can be assimilated over a period of time into society with no big deal. There are just specific circumstances that will have to take place if so. And by the way, have you ever had a non-binary barista make your fucking coffee? We need non-binary people. So get Blair, you have to stop. 
But also, I think we are in the age of breaking down the gender binary clearly, and this is only the beginning. But just because it's confusing doesn't mean it's bad. Here's the yeah. thing about a lot of <laughs> the people who identify as non-binary, so to speak. When they do so, they typically don't medically transition. Right. And when you do so, that, that at that point, it's a costume. Mm -hmm. Well, like, it's, it's gender nonconformity, right? And so we... Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a costume, it's gender nonconformity. They're not... Con you're not... Con you're non-binary. You're not conforming to either or gender. Because as, as they can... Blair, which also doesn't make it a third gender. Take saying. this off. I can't take this off. Yeah, as Blair's saying, we look at gender nonconformity, which used to be okay. You can wear what you want. You can you can present however you want, but it doesn't make you something different. Yeah, I feel like a non-binary... I, I don't want to speak for non-binary people at all, but I just feel like someone who is non-binary is going against the gender stereotypes and all that stuff, and they, they are... Sam... They are Sam. They are not this idea of what you would call a woman or a man. They are just who they want to be, and that's how they feel comfortable expressing themselves. And I just, I don't see how, I, I can understand how that definitely confuses people. I, I, I have no issue with someone just being Sam and me referring to them as so. I meet a trans person, right? Like a trans woman, a trans man. There is an inherent camaraderie. Like when you, you know, mentioned, I can't take this off. Part of me almost got a little bit emotional. I know it's hard to believe people think I have emotions, but I really do. And because I saw you in that moment, and I said, you know what? We are similar in that way. We may be different in other ways. We don't know each other very well, but we have that. When I talk to or I'm around a non-binary person, it doesn't really, you know, click, it doesn't connect because it is so different. So I think that's inherently, I should be able to see some semblance of my own issue within own that community. person, and I don't yeah. when they're non binary and, at all. And so I have no issue with non binary people. I just don't. Hmm. So Blair is saying that she doesn't see similarities between her and a non binary person. I'm just trying to think of that point. But Blair doesn't see similarities between her and a lot of different trans people, anyways. But, but you have to feel some sort of dysphoria if you are non binary. Otherwise, you wouldn't be non-binary, right? I'm asking the question. I'm not making a statement. I'm, I'm asking because I don't. I don't feel educated enough on the non-binary community to like actually say things that I think are inherently true. But you're not aligning with the gender assigned at birth, so that make you non-binary. So, aren't there similarities there? Wouldn't there be similarities there between me and somebody who is NB? Don't think that we're the same. Yeah, same. And so, but we and also yeah, no, we are also not. Exactly, we well, are not the same. Like, I am a trans man, you are non-binary. Let's see what the libs have to say, stupid libs. I think lib, it would lib, be lib. really hard for a cis person to truly imagine Sasha. what it's like to be trans and what it's like to live with that and be born that way. And I'm not non-binary, and so I really cannot picture what it would, because I'm a binary trans person, I can't imagine what it's like to be in between that. But just like how the cis person can't really truly understand that, it doesn't mean that it's not a thing and it's not real. And I really believe that we have like 85 years like on this earth and like so many people spend so much time being like sad and uncomfortable in their bodies and if we were just all comfortable like if somebody like wants to go by a name and like dress a certain way and they are saying this makes me so comfortable this is what makes me happy there is no reason they shouldn't do that and my god there is no reason why we should say well you're not a part of this because like this is us and like this is whatever because literally like we could all sit here and agree that like non-binary people are like not a part of the trans community or whatever blair listen to a person without fucking making faces sorry and i believe that non-binary people are a part of the community because i have so many shared experiences with so many non-binary people i know we have very similar experiences in growing up with dysphoria, with transition, with anything, and nobody has to do anything. Nobody has to transition in a way they don't want to transition. And yeah, like, let's be a happy family. My God, let's all just be happy. <laughs> exactly. That's all it comes down to. That's what I'm trying to fucking say. Who gives a fuck? Who cares if people want to dress a certain way or go by the name Zach or, and be called they? It's just like let people fucking exist in the way that they want to exist without saying well you're not fucking trans you can't sit here you can't sit here with us fucking regina george over here you can't sit with us because she's the goddess of who is and who isn't trans i actually understand like a lot of the points that are being made here from the conservative side because i grew up conservative i voted when i was 18 i voted for fucking bush damn girl like uh, i was conservative conservative okay so we're the same age so it was not until my later age that i kind of decided like you know what let me be more open to different types of communication different types of people i actually talked so much shit about pronouns like uh, they, them, all the sounds like, what is this trash? 
when it first started really coming out, I did not disagree. I did not agree with it. I was like, what is this? This is stupid. How can you be a them? Blah, 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 blah. You were correct. And I did the whole thing, the grammatically, you're interrupting me. But you were correct. I'm but just saying. I'm agreeing with they you. Asked Bro, she's so snarky. I just can't deal with the fucking disrespect. I hate people who are disrespectful. They is, uh, you can use it as a singular pronoun. God damn. As someone who is an avid reader and someone who fucking reads plays and Shakespeare and Chekhov and all this bullshit, like, I can't, and I'm an actor, and I can't deal with the fact that people don't understand the basic, and I also wanted to be an English teacher, so I know a lot about English. I fucking read all the time. You can use it as a singular. It's not bullshit. It is a fucking pronoun, just like you is a pronoun. They is a pronoun. He is a pronoun. She is a pronoun. I is a pronoun. Me. Like, do, it do, it's not, it's, it's not bullshit. Yes, it might be hard for that to come out of your mouth when you're talking about your friend and you're like, Sam, they want to go to Urban Outfitters to go buy some clothes to see what fits them best. Yeah, it might be hard for you to say that, but grammatically, it is not incorrect. Therefore, someone can use those pronouns. It might make you uncomfortable. You might think it's weird. That's fine. But if you love Sam, you're going to treat them in a way that makes them comfortable. It's not, it's not trash blair read a fucking book read a p play read, go take an english class or something i i can't ask you not to comment and you're commenting so if you could stop that'd be great well, thank whatever. you so anyway as i was saying <laughs> uh you know so i i changed my mind because i got to spend time around other people who were non-binary who were non-conforming and i got to speak with them and i got to experience their life and their experiences and then i realized myself i'm like shit Maybe this is what I've been experiencing my whole life, only because I was exposed to it. If I would have never been exposed to it, I would have never known that this could have been my experience. And I would have lived the rest of my life as a different person, as somebody who I'm not. And it's funny that you keep talking, that some people keep talking about, oh, you need to go through HRT, you need to have surgeries in order to be trans. That is all garbage. Another thing I never said, it's just so crazy. Again, I did. you're still well, interrupting you... me while I'm talking. This is the second you're addressing... time now. <laughs> Another thing I didn't say. I did. It was me, by the way. It's not, not everything's about you. <laughs> HRT, you need to have surgeries in order to be trans. That is all garbage. Another thing I never said, it's just so crazy. Again, I did. I mean, sometimes it's like the power that mm. needs to hold me I back. I mean, you're because... appropriating a medical condition. That's what you're really doing. I exist, I am proof that non-binary people exist and that it is a thing. And because I'm sitting right here in front of all of you, I'm a real person. This is my experience, just as yours is a trans experience, that as a trans woman. But I'm not here to belittle your experience or to tell you that you don't exist. And that's the difference between you and I, that you're trying to cancel you and when I say you, I'm talking about conservatives. And maybe it is you. You're part of the thing. So, You're part so of the thing. Here's so why, where I get to interject so why because there's a lot okay. of things said Stop about me. Stop addressing her and just talk to everybody. Okay. But what is your dysphoria? Well, I, there were some things. I never said you don't exist. So we can add that to the long list of things y'all have said I've said that I didn't. We know you exist, you're here, you're not fictitious, right? My point is you're different than me and I don't even think you deny that, but yet when I say it, it's an issue, right? The same way that he said he can't take that off, you can, right? It's different. At the very least, it's different. And when we have a community that there are so many categories, demi girl, demi boy, astrosexual, all this shit, but y'all can't fathom that maybe that would be a different category than what I am when we have such different, as you keep saying, and everyone keeps well, saying- Well, they do know that it's a different thing, but if it's that's under the trans umbrella, they're identifying as trans, but they know that they're not a trans woman or a trans man. I mean, we give, if they, if they really want to, no pun intended, create a new community, go for it. But I just think it was easier for non-binary people to be recognized under the category of trans because they feel dysphoria. And, and gender dysphoria is part of what you need to get diagnosed as tr fucking trans. It doesn't make sense. A bisexual is different than a gay man. I actually want to ask you a question. What is your dysphoria though? Because gender dysphoria or sex dysphoria, as I would rather call it, is a, an uncomfortability between my secondary sex characteristics, not just what I wear on a daily basis, because masculinity and femininity doesn't have anything to do with being trans. But that is not true. You can have dysphoria without having to be dysphoric about your sex parts. What is your you dysphoria? dysphoria? What is, what about is your dysphoria? Anything. Straight cis women have dysphoria about their breast augmentation. It's not dysphoria. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean 
that I'm not dysphoric about certain things. I cannot believe that I grew up as, you know, this five-year-old little kid experiencing just crippling gender dysphoria, like horrible thoughts, struggled so much my entire life to be sitting in this room and you're explaining to her what dysphoria is. I have my experience. It's it doesn't mean amazing. that I didn't have crippling. You got a different it experience. It doesn't mean you got a different experience. We all have a different. We all have a, we different, have a different experience. Okay, okay, it's different. Different. I know, but we're all okay. both not. A okay. Every single person's experience here with gender dysphoria, even, is different. Most likely different. Every single one, in any type of way. Person, so I can't speak for non-binary people, but I can talk about what I've been taught by non-binary people. From what I understand, when it comes to some non-binary people, sometimes they have to go into the gender binary for safety reasons, depending on the environment that they're in. A non-binary person stepping into this world and dismissing the gender norms of what people think a man and a woman is supposed to be like is so powerful. If you don't want to be mutable to the times of the expansion of the trans and non-binary experience, then just say that. I would rather you just say that you are not willing to move forward, learn the new terminology, learn the new pronouns that come with the trans umbrella and the trans experience for the most part. My big thing when it comes to, and you know, I agree with a lot of the things that you just said. I've, I actually love you, I adore you. Oh, thank you, um, right back at you. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? That's not the prompt. The prompt was, is it different? And it is, again, when I go out I can't like take my beard off, girl. It's not coming off. Right. You know, I you know, it, unfortunately, you know, as much as I hate having trapacial hair despite being a guy, you know, like real. It <laughs> Yeah. Like I can't go and reshape my body. I can't go and shave my Adam's apple down. I don't really know how else to wrap that up. Doctors are manipulating trans medical care. Definitely, they definitely can. Doctors manipulate uh, any type of medical care, and they will, if they could do it with ever, anything else, they can. There are bad doctors and good doctors. I think there's three types of doctors out there. I think there are the ones who absolutely think that they're doing this for the right reasons. I think that there are the ones who are absolutely doing it for money, like we saw at Vanderbilt. And then I think that there are, I don't know if it's incompetence or ineptitude because, or laziness. Because what we're seeing, not just in the trans community, we're seeing in society, I agree with SSRIs her. being pushed on, on patients. Mental health doctors are pushing so many different uh, drugs without getting to the root issues. See, I have an interesting perspective. They do. And that's why I agree with that because there are so many doctors who will be like, you're sad, all right, here. You can't sleep? There are plenty of doctors who do bullshit, and now they could do it with trans people too. So I'm actually surprised that the the libs, the libs, didn't go up there. I've been out for 11 years this year. I've been on testosterone since I was 15 years old. And even looking into it, I waltzed my little ass up into that doctor's office, and I left on testosterone. He gave me my first shot in the doctor's office that day. Oh my gosh. I was 15 years old. What if I had, what if I had been wrong? <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> what if I had been wrong? It really just is that simple. I'm joining mid convo. Wow, okay. nice to see you. Because that right there, though, that right there is an issue. See, that right there is an issue. I couldn't do that, which is interesting because me and him have a very similar timeline. Eleven years transitioned on T for ten, and I was seeing ther therapists before I even transitioned. I was literally told so much information from a therapist. Then she recommended a doctor. Then I had to meet that doctor. Then we talked about it, talked about all the stuff. We had a few meetings, all that stuff, and then finally came the day, and it was like a, like a year or two after I had been probably two years after therapy, a year as, as living as a male that I was or a year and a half, I finally able to start testosterone um, by my doctor. She doesn't just throw things at you. She wants to get to the root of the issue. And that's the issue with some of, the, some of these medical doctors. It's, it's money in their pocket if they don't care or ignorance. I believe that people should be evaluated and go through tests. And like for me, getting on testosterone and getting surgery was a massive process in my life. But I do think that it probably happens. Just like you said, like with SSRIs and stuff, like things are overprescribed. I do think it's a massive issue. Um, I think that society in general, as Sarah mentioned, but you know, when it comes to the trans issue, I think just the fact that there were really almost no detransitioners as recent as like five, six years ago. Um, and the fact that it's exploded now shows that it is a massive issue. And, you know, I think that 
I can reflect what you said. I was over 18 when I started my hormones, but I had a 20 minute appointment and just like you, I walked in and out with an estrogen prescription. In what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't know that. Why did I have to go through such a long process? I just got, I'm from Massachusetts. All right, I got the best of the best. So I have the fucking, I have the best medical shit over here, but wow. Holy fucking shit, dude. Saying I wasn't tested I for my I didn't have to levels. see a therapist first. No. I had no letter. And you were a child. What? I was a child. I was so, and that old. is a very, in very one of the most conservative states in the country. So if that's what's going on wow. in Georgia, yeah. wow. can you imagine what's going on everywhere else. California, hello. Yeah, when I went. Hey, Massachusetts, it wasn't happening there, buddy. It's not like the most liberal state. For my um, initial appointment, I literally up. helped my doctor find gender dysphoria on his chart and Ugh. mark it for me. That's insane. And I walked out with my prescription and yeah. that day. I, I, I mean, because I do a lot of work with the D-trans community. And wow. I'm sorry, I'm just mind blown, guys. Holy shit. Problem is, is I actually don't really care too much about, you know, if you are an adult and you walk into a doctor's office and want, uh, want estrogen and you walk out, it's, I don't think that's an issue. What is an issue is when doctors are not giving all the information, when they're actually telling you that this is what's right for you and then it's not. Um, they're actually manipulating their patients, they're manipulating, you know, they say if you don't do this, you're gonna kill yourself and, and all this stuff. So I would actually rather a doctor say, I have no idea what this is gonna do to you, but it's your body, your choice, you can do what you want. And then are there doctors saying that though like are there doctors like having like someone sit down and say i kind of feel uncomfy being a boy well then you should take estrogen because or you're gonna kill yourself so here's your prescription i mean the other th things that people were saying sound more accurate i don't know what she's really talking about i still think as an adult you should you should have some evaluation another thing i was never informed of you know when i started my hormone journey and now it seems you know like common sense but i was you know 20 so it's like you know even 20 year olds can have oversights um no one told me i had to freeze my sperm that's crazy so i'm years into estrogen i reached the, p the point of adulthood where you maybe meet a partner okay but blair like to be fair to be fair, because Blair acts like kids are stupid and they don't know these things, like, why don't you just Google it? If you ever thought about having kids or think common sense, like, hmm, I'm going to put estrogen in my body. Will that affect my sperm or the um, functions of my genitals? Probably. Like, it's a common, I, I just feel like, I feel like that's such a stupid card to play. Like, I just didn't fucking know. Well, do your research. I, like, I knew it when I was 16 years old. I knew it when I was even younger. When taking tea, and I already knew this before, my therapist said it like 10 times, but I was just like, that's a common sense point. If you're like 20 and you can't really put together the dots, I don't know. And I learned that I can't. And it's simply because that doctor didn't care to tell me. And why, who knows, maybe it was- But I do believe it. I do believe that doctor, no, I do believe that doctor should tell you. They, they should def that should be something they tell you, like sit you down and tell you a list. That's what I was, <laughs> that's what I was told. But at the same time, it's also a common sense thing. And also, why didn't you do research? I'm not trying to defend the doctor. You need to educate someone before take, they take a medication. Um, you let me know if this happens, this happens, this happens, whatever. Same goes for hormones, but like Blair, that's just, I don't like that. She just, I'll move on. I just think that's stupidity. It was because of money, it was easier for him or better for him to get me in and out and get that money rather than maybe a couple more appointments where I'm having to figure out, you know, how to freeze my sperm in the meantime. But a lot of these doctors are also activists. They're, they also they're, don't tell trans men that they're gonna go through menopause. Right, there's a lot of issues with trans men. Buck Angel talks about that. Mm -hmm. uh, he almost a lot died. Of issues. Yeah, like, he's he a friend died. of mine. Like, yeah. yeah. Insane. I cannot stand Buck Angel for the life of me. Buck Angel has smoked enough weed to rot his entire brain sorry stoners <laughs> i'm sorry um so i actually almost walked up um because i do feel like the system is like pretty broken and there's not enough education in the medical system for doctors to be prescribing all the things that they do again discussing ssris like i was a victim of that myself i empathize for those stories i i understand that that does happen i'm not negating that but i think to negate you know, medical service is somebody who needs it, who, who it might be life or death for, just because you feel some type of way about it isn't right. Like, why do you care what little Timothy or, or, or Sally are doing or whatever? Like, why do you personally care what? Well, Timothy and well, Sally children, are eight and 12, so. so. Okay. But we're not talking about 
children seven or 12, and this doesn't happen often. Has it happened? Yeah, it has, because that's the thing. It's, it's a big world. Like things happen all the time. Things we can't even imagine happen. It's just as a reality. But again, to walk through a door and then close it for other people to walk through, that's kind of messed up. So to your point for being able to receive uh, hormone therapy in the way that you did, I had a similar experience. I was able to walk in and get access to hormones. Um, and that's- Where the fuck are you guys going? How, what? I've never heard the, how often this has happened. Okay, I guess I have to educate myself a little more. Holy fucking shit, dude. Has you got, did that, if you're still watching, can you, have you done that? Why did I have to do an arm and a leg? I'm happy I did an arm and a leg. The system was set up through advocacy because of what a lot of community folks are actually facing. Now, can I admit that there is some medical malpractice? Yes, I myself had uh, issues obtaining testosterone consistently. For some reason, you know, the script doesn't match up or you gotta get in contact with the doctor. And it was part of the reason why I chose actually to go off testosterone because I didn't like the idea of not having constant access because I was worried about the damage that it could cause to my body. And also because I wanted to keep intact my reproductive rights. From what I have seen when it comes to these detransitioners, from my understanding in terms of the statistics, trans people are 8% of the population, and then the detransitioners are somewhere from one to 8% as well. So all of these laws, so to a degree, yes, we are guinea pigs in the shot in the dark, but just like in the 80s when AZT was being discovered, or 90s when it's being discovered, those folks had to go through that process, and I was given informed consent and understood that when I signed that. We just don't know because the studies aren't there like you said, right? So the problem is when you talk about like the detransition rate, what generally happens is there's no follow-up. The longest study that's been done is five years out. The uh, average detransition happens between four and 10 years. So we're not capturing all of that. Plus, if you haven't had your primary sex organs removed, you literally stop, you just stop taking hormones and then you never go see your doctor again. And so they never follow up and you just fall off the rolls. So they, the, the, Stats on detransition is completely false. So That's actually a pretty good point as well. Point and like also, um, hold on. I'm gonna say something. Um, First of all, I wanna say? empathize with everyone here when it comes to healthcare system because it's not always for us. Um, I don't think that doctors are manipulating trans care. I think they're still learning about trans care. And to your point, there is not a lot both. of research because the research is still new and fresh. You know, detransitioning is a thing, but truth be told, detransitioning is actually rare when it comes to not just wanting to be trans anymore. Now, the underlying factors within that is healthcare conditions, um, which I actually heard um, a trans man who is famous talk about you know very well. I agree with what y'all were saying because these issues are very, very real. But also I think it's really because doctors are still learning about our experience. For a community that is 1% or less of the general population, we can never seem to find it within ourselves to find empathy for it, even if it is the 1% of our community, which is detransitioners, and for the horrific medical malpractice, abuse, mental and spiritual turmoil they go through, it's like, so we want the rest of the world to say this 1% matters, but our 1% doesn't matter. That's the first thing. The second thing is it's not as if they detransition. Okay, I get it there. Um, I, I do actually think a lot of people do empathize with detransitioners. The only time when people don't empathize with detransitioners is when they start to weaponize their experience and they say, I, so I wasn't trans. And this, is, this is what happens when you put a, a girl on testosterone and stuff like that. When they say bullshit like that, when they start... Um, buzzwords and all this bullshit just to fear monger an audience again to control them and to say hey this is what's happening um happened to me so it's probably happening to you too and your children so uh just keep an eye out for that it didn't work out for me so it's probably not going to work out for you when there's a detransitioner who actually shares their experience and says this is what happened for me i thought it was right for me and it wasn't and i'm just trying to help anybody out there who might have the same experiences as me and hopefully you don't have to go through what I went through and that's why I'm sharing my story. Those detransitioners are, I feel like they're very, very, very overlooked because they aren't um, extremists and there are a lot of extremist detransitioners out there who fear monger people, like I said, and those are the ones who get praised. And as Blair is saying, like, um, we kind of just say, oh, well, they're just the 1% or we just don't care about them or something like that. I think the reason that the LGBT community feels that way 
is because of the way that those scenarios are shown or uh, shared. When it comes to someone genuinely sharing their detransition experience and coming from an actual place of concern and not trying to scare people, that's where I think a lot of empathy and not not that you like pity that person, but you, you, you know, that, that sucks that they had to go through that. I want to hear her second point though. It's not as if they detransition because of, just like you said, the loosening of all the restrictions to get on these drugs. It's like, that's not a good thing. Gatekeeping is a good thing. Like making sure the right people are getting on these drugs so there aren't regret cases, there aren't (laughs) botched cases. That's what we have to go towards because right now we're going down the slippery slope. (laughs) She just said gatekeeping is a good thing. I know that this is a point that people try to make and I get where Blair is coming from. Let's try to make sure that there isn't this, but people have gone through all those loopholes and have thought that this was the right thing for them and have gotten cleared and gotten this and have lived for whatever gender for eight years and this was right for them and every they checked off everything off of that list but at the end of the day they still detransitioned there is no way to be a hundred percent good a hundred percent of the time we can use this for examples with cosmetic surgeries on the face you can't that's something something somebody wants to do and they're going to do it let's just say you want lip injections you end up liking it and you do it and you keep getting it for five years or something like that and then five years down the line you're like this this wasn't really for me you know i checked off everything on the list that i, I wanted this and but it's not really for me and i hate it and i don't like the way it looks i don't know how lip injections work don't they go away after a little bit they do right but you get it you, after you have too many they look fucked up or something i don't know anyways what i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is we can't be right 100 percent of the time and i know that but i think we should try our best to almost be that way 100 percent of the time but people are human beings and they are going to mistake something for gender dysphoria and as i have studied in most of my things for my videos about d trans because i've made quite a few more than 50 percent of reasons of detransition i think it's even higher than that i don't have the stats on hand i could show it on screen is not because they don't have gender dysphoria it is society it's money it's not passing it's losing your family and friends or some shit like that or difficulty getting a job there are so many different reasons and it's just not because they don't have gender dysphoria anyone can get on it every single person here i'm pretty sure just stated that they went in and walked out in an hour or less to get their hormones and that's a huge problem especially a child because of things that but yes that is a i think that is an issue as well to your point about gaining research how do you expect the medical community to gain access to research if we're just preventing these folks to actually go through any of the processes to learn the scientific method of what is happening uh, just like it with azt drugs where we learned that that was actually harming us and now we have things like bictarby yeah so it's the same way as we have with any research you have a very select very heavy gatekeeping crew that you're allowed to you know create these studies around and you need a good checklist to be like these people show all the actual signs of gender dysphoria they are having like very strong distress you know and in every state that's passed bans on um, access for minors also has provisions except for in the most extreme cases to conduct studies on okay very interesting um i fucking forget what i wanted to say i don't think that we should disallow young children to not be able to transition just because there's not enough studies like there there's going to be a point where there are enough studies where we can be like hey this is good or hey this isn't good but you know as far as being a child and transitioning let's just say five years old all all they're doing is cutting their clothes and you know having a nickname and and dressing in different clothes did i already say that and that's what it is. And if that continues until they're 10, 11, 12, then you start to talk about puberty blockers and then the risks of that and stuff like that. But if, I mean, if it's continued from age five to 10 and to 12, that's still, a, that's a, that's a very long time. And that is pretty much checking everything off the list. And kids are given the puberty blockers, though there are goods and bads of it. The puberty blockers are there to to wait that puberty out let's just say a year let's to see if that kid still wants to move on with the transition because if they do then they can start talking about hormones and doing all that stuff it's almost like kind of like a stop but there there is there's lots of controversy around um puberty blockers hey if you're gonna put something in your body it causes shit all medications do
So even the Tylenol you're taking for your headache when you're hungover tomorrow or watching this video. Gender affirming transition is suicide prevention. Uh, I mean, that is such a stupid fucking question. I don't even know why they ask this question because absolutely it can be but at the same time you can still be so depressed after transitioning still i'm just gonna say basically sort of kind of not really i don't know i just said yes and then sort of and then no i'm, I'm in the middle i don't have i don't have a clear answer for that i mean obviously it's a known thing that trans youth are at greater risk of suicide and just suicidal ideations and so i know there are a lot of kids and a lot of pain and growing up as a trans kid i was in so much pain and i feel like i could have been spared of a lot of that and gotten to enjoy my life a lot more if i had earlier access to gender affirming care and even the gender affirming care that i did receive later in my life and i went on hormones when i was like 16 and i got top surgery at 17 that completely changed my life in the most dramatic way and so, yeah, I think it is life-saving care, and I think a lot of trans people would agree. I dealt with uh, a lot of those thoughts because of being trans and feeling different and not knowing what to do about it. And I, there was a point in my life where I had to come out to my mom, and if I was unable to get the care for that, I, I just I could not live the way that I was anymore. My quality of life internally was fucking awful and it, it, I'm very, very good at hiding things, so I hid everything as much as I could until I couldn't anymore. And if I was unable and my mom was not accepting, I just I would not be sitting here at this desk today. I just still think being a trans person is very taxing mentally, regardless of how many surgeries you have. Uh, for me personally, it just doesn't matter. I've chosen to not medically transition in my bottom half. Let's put it that way, <clears throat> but. And this is the first time I'm actually saying this out loud, but I'm, I am having facial feminization surgery. And that was an incredibly, ridiculously difficult journey. I still had to go through so many, so many hoops, and I was still denied by insurance. And in my own personal life, I've also struggled quite a bit with mental health. And, um, you know, a lot of that really relates to the certain parts of my body. Like, I always hated my body when I was younger, and I didn't understand why. And you know, and I was always dressing, you know, as like a cis male and I just had all this, this stuff just didn't fit. It just didn't feel right. And it, it was just like a, this darkness in my life. Like I just wanted it, you know, gone. Um, and I just learned to live with it. But then eventually like figure out who I am and, and, and all that. And like now I know like this is, this is life-saving care. Like this for me is life-saving care. Like who knows where I could be in, in a few years had I not um, known who I am and had access to care. I think too often we hear, you know, that if we don't affirm our child's, you know, gender identity that's different than their their sex, then they're going to commit suicide. We hear this all the time, especially from the detransition community whose parents were told this and it was manipulative. We hear politicians say this all the time when they're trying to, you know, stop bills or pass bills. The problem with that is that's the same line that abusers use. I get that. I get it. It's just like but it can also be the reality of it because it was for me um i almost practically had to say if you don't let me do this i will k-word myself which is fucking abusive if you look at, i've had people say if you don't do this on a different scale I'll, i'm gonna k i'm gonna k myself that that is a fuck abusive terminology but it was true i actually meant it i wasn't using it to manipulate it wasn't used to manipulate um it was like well, you can either, like, help me through this or don't help me through this. I, I didn't use it to control a person's behavior. I just wanted to live as how I wanted to live. And that was actually the reality of it. And it can be for many, many other trans people. But I don't think that is the wording that should be used. When it comes to gender affirming care, I appreciate everything that gender affirming care has done for me. Um, and I, I thank God every day that this was the right decision for me because I have friends like Richie who it wasn't the right decision for and now he's missing genitals. So, you know, when it, when it comes to it being life-saving... Right, but that was Richie's decision. There's a little thing called a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? And sometimes when we create a narrative 
it can kind of take on a life of its own. So I know there's a lot of talk about suicide statistics in the trans community. And interestingly, almost all of those statistics come out of LGBT activist organizations who have an incentive to put those numbers out to portray this image that we are suffering greatly, we're under attack, and then all of those suicide rates are due to societal mistreatment. And when these kids are being told, like you said, when they're going into these doctors, the doctors are telling their parents essentially emotional blackmail. They're saying trans... I don't know how true that is and if that actually happens and how many doctors have said that to, um, to parents. I I've heard it a bit, but I've not really seen like it be a phenomenon. Your kid or your kid's going to die. And they say it in front of the child. And they set up this false dichotomy as if those are the only two options moving forward. And here to tell any child feeling any type of way, those are not your only two options. In fact, there is a vast array of options in between and around suicide and transition. Therapists and doctors aren't even legally allowed to say, no, you're not trans, you're actually experiencing A, B, or C. And that's the case with D-trans people as well. Sure, well, I mean, a doctor can sit you down and say like, I, well, you're not showing symptoms of depression or gender dysphoria based off of, you know, our, our visits and stuff like that. They're, they can say that. They have these, this huge host of issues, depression, body dysmorphia, anorexia, eating disorders, um, maybe sexual abuse in their past. People don't know that a symptom, a long observed symptom of sexual abuse is wanting to be the other gender to cope with it. Um, that was actually a common thing that I saw. And these are just, I'm just, we, we are just talking that there's no fucking facts here. Uh, but this is something common that I saw amongst the transitioners when I was researching. It was um, due to sexual trauma and stuff like that because they feel so disgusting in that body that they were essayed as and, and were victim as. So they transition to cope with that because they feel like they can now they can protect themselves and this, this shell that they have of themselves. I've seen that so that, I, I do know that is a thing. I just think it's a false dichotomy that it's either death or transition. Um, and But with that said, I agree with you. I appreciate everything that transition's uh, done for me, but it's too much of a roll of the dice, and I think it's unhealthy telling people, do it or you're going to die. Well, I agree, but I also feel like this is a conservative talking point where it's not happening enough that it's actually an issue. Um, I... Like I said, I haven't heard enough about it being a phenomenon where doctors are saying, you need to transition your kid or he's going to die. If it was that big of an issue, I feel like it would just be talked about more and the doctors would be a lot more, uh, what's the word for it, Scorn, scorned for that. And of course, there is there is more than an option of transition or KYS, right? If you are thinking of these two things and they're both in your head and you don't know what to do, but you feel like a transitioning is going to rush you, but then you feel like... S, do you feel like suicidal? I'm trying not to, <laughs> to try not to trigger people, and I'm trying not to to get demonetized. You can take your time. Everything and every time I make a video, every single time I say this, it's take your time. If you think that transitioning isn't right for you, please take your time. Google your shit. Talk to therapists. Go to doctors. Talk to other trans people. Watch videos. Watch educate. Read books take your time it's not this or that it's never this or that we agree to disagree but the research has not been comp completely fulfilled yet because a lot of these people don't even know about our experience and that is why it's important that we make it very clear what we need to do there's also speaking of the numbers that come out of lgbt actors true i mean i haven't been part of any numbers of anything i mean i don't think i was i was never like questionnaire at a doctor's office or something about my trans experience like even regarding this question and other questions. Uh, activist organizations, there was a little number that the life expectancy of a trans woman was 35. That was rescinded a couple years ago after like over a decade of that being like just factually, you know, shared. And I always thought that my life was statistically gonna end at 35. So, but those numbers were based on by those organizations, prostitute deaths. So it's not always the most reputable numbers they're getting, you know what I mean? And these activist organizations are political too. We get caught up in calling them activists and we think it's this emotional, spiritual thing, but they are political organizations. Yeah. There are a lot of political organizations. So this is why it's very, very, you need to take your research and you need to really, really, <laughs> you really need to really, really research it. When I'm doing my research, I know reputable sources because there are places that are political and you don't know where you there is 
giant websites that are just databases full of databases full of resources and studies from authors that we don't even know if it's true or where it was taken from or what else was also in those statistics so it's always like uh, it just makes it it makes it difficult but at the same time then like i'm not, i actually don't know what they're talking about so i'm not going i can't really like speak for it myself and i don't feel like looking it up because i've been filming for like a couple of hours and uh anyways yeah you need to make sure that when you are looking into these things it is what it says it is or it's representing what it says it's representing because there is a lot of misinformation absolutely everywhere <clears throat> this video being one of them also so i am an activist and so a lot of what you're talking about really was focused more on black trans women because black trans women do not live past the age of 35 because oftentimes it is our that is the statistic that i saw as well was black trans women. group within right. the trans community that is often murdered we're often harassed yeah. We're often discriminated against and so a lot more of that focus has had to be around black brown indigenous folks because oftentimes the research goes missing for us they sourced and, it from prostitutes though that was the source of the but stat. see the thing is though even when we talk about prostitutes trans women have to sometimes participate in sex work to survive but they base it off cis prostitutes sorry but, i'm done it was yes. just it was false numbers so from what i understand is i wish what are they talking about i don't even want to go back what are they uh, i'm not seeing anything where blair talked about prostitutes sorry i was doing a little bit of research but uh, the only thing i could find that said anything about this statistic was the 19th news.org which is a nonprofit in texas and they only basically said like experts said blah 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 so they're not sure where they got the statistic anyways i mean we can all agree that uh, trans people trans women i don't even have to look at statistics to guess this but trans women are probably um murdered more um, and that's probably even higher for any trans woman of any race that isn't white as well. I don't know. Anyways, I was just I was just trying to see what Blair was talking about. I didn't see anything about prostitutes, and that was the only article I could find about that. And then it was like Reddit posts. But apparently it, it was debunked that it wasn't 35. I don't know. I don't know. Let's, uh, is, don't know. A lot of that focus has always been around black trans women because we do not oh. get to see the age of 35. You are in a place... When I say privilege, you're in a place of privilege where you do not have to worry about the harassment and the discrimination that I face. I face as a black person. I face as a We're black person. Get I'm not going to say that you do not experience harassment or discrimination. That's not what I'm saying because, like you said, you're a person of nuance. And so, follow me here. When I come as a person of color, as a black trans woman, you and I do not get to have that same experience. There are you more went to the White House, there are, I didn't. There are more rooms that you get to walk in that I will for be forbidden in. And <laughs> you went to the White House, I didn't the one thing care. about it is, that's why it's important, like someone like me has to create her own space to be able to so counteract what you're doing. And I'm, so not saying, and I'm not saying that you don't. But what I'm saying here is what I'm trying to get you to. She isn't saying that she doesn't. It's just, I, I know what she's saying. Like if you are, she's going to be more discriminated against as a black trans woman than I, a, a white trans man. Or even if it was I, a, a white trans woman. I don't think Blair, I don't know if Blair's white. I think she's like, isn't she like Latina or something? She is fucking Latina. Look at me, I'm fucking smart. She's half Irish? I'm half Irish. Are we related? Oh my god, we're probably like very, very distant relatives. My blackness should not have to pay for your whiteness that, that doesn't even make sense. is destroying I'm because destroying of your community. So are you going to tell all of my exes How are you going to say that and then that's the end? What you're talking about too is they're not... <laughs> Shit, okay. I enjoyed this... Okay, that was the end. Oh, let's see what the Bait fucking end is. For what it was, you know, um, it was quite ugly at certain points, and I wish that it was all trans people on the panel because that would have been a, yeah, more appropriate and more fitting. Oh, you're so um, offensive. You're an offensive okay. person, human being. Yeah. Okay, okay. Just well, so you know. I, I find a lot of things over here offensive as well. Oh, Ew. wow. Um, yeah, you're disgusting. And I have to, I, trust yeah, me, okay. the feeling is lie. more than mutual. <laughs> um, but I will say. I'm glad that we're watching till the end because I. Just is you don't have to have the snarky comments. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean that y you get to dictate something. That it was very enlightening, and I hope to be back at Jubilee soon. Blair White flew out to do Jubilee, by the way. 
because I don't think she doesn't live in LA anymore. Definitely think this was interesting. Obviously, I don't think we have a lot of common ground on a lot of things, but I think we found some. I think what most conservatives in general believe is as an adult, you can do what you want with your body. I talk to conservatives all the time. We don't allow children to make decisions for themselves on an, a wide range of issues, um, and, and that's why we don't let them, you know, mutilate their bodies. I mean, it was. Oh God. Yeah, like it was educational, enlightening. I got to learn a lot, and it's nice meeting all of you. I liked hearing the different perspectives, and I feel like, even though I'm like definitely in my beliefs like i understand where things come from i just do not agree saying that everybody on this panel is not trans i think it's bullshit and i think you're trans and you're a part of my community thank you yep i really appreciate sasha. it sasha i just fucking tell her dude all of y'all i love the snarky face. ass we don't have to agree with each other but these conversations need to continue happening because they're not happening anywhere else and so until we're all and i wish we could have these conversations without snarkiness or anger or anything like that and they know what they're doing jubilee knows what they're doing <clears throat> that's why they don't ever have me on their show if we could just have these conversations and not act like children and baboons about it that would be fantastic wouldn't it all creating more platforms around this for ourselves so other people can understand then you know let's keep at it i mean honestly regardless of my interaction with blair here today we are all, for the most part, I think, mostly in an echo chamber in our own lives. So it's nice, actually, to be in front of all these people, especially the ones who don't see the things the way I do, because it also opens my eyes to see, you know, like, maybe I could rethink X, Y, Z, or maybe there's something I learned today. I'm not closed off to learning something new or to changing my mind, because I've done that before, and I can do that again, and I will evolve as a human being. All I have to say to the general public is start thinking of reasons why you supported doing this to kids. Okay. And to that point. Okay, I don't even know what the fuck that even means. You were a kid when you transitioned and you're fucking happy about it. So it's like, I got mine, fuck you. Okay, whatever it is, whatever it is. Point, um, <laughs> Come on, we're saying, uh, oh, it's just, that. I'm hoping that folks will be able to understand why the activism is there and what it is, because generally there may be mistakes made in that light, but at the end of the day, we are as trans people trying to gain access to society in a healthy, safe way and also see a future for ourselves, which is something that I never had access to with the way that I grew up and a lot of that ideology of not being allowed to do things when I was 18, even though I knew exactly. So that's everything I have for today. I mean, I, I, I agreed with both sides on different things, it just depends. But uh, yeah, that was kind of brutal though. That was pretty fucking brutal. I love reacting to the trans videos that Jubilee puts out. So if you guys uh, do want to see me do another reaction to them, go ahead for sure. Let me know if you want me to be on Jubilee. Uh, maybe we can figure out a way for that to happen. Happy October. I will see you very soon. Very, very soon. Okay, love you. Bye.